Okay, so now we've talked about the um, so now we've talked about the print working directory command, which shows you where you are in the file system, what directory you're in, and the path all the way from root to your current folder that you're in. We've learned about the change directory command, which you can use to um, navigate to. Um, if you use the change directory command and you do change directory, you could say apply an absolute path, which in this case would be like, let's say, change directory, root, and then let's say etc. And that's going to take me directly to the root etc folder, to the etc folder which is under root, right? I can type ls and see all of the files and folders that are in there, right? I'm going to type clear. Clear is another command that will just clear the screen. So I'll do that. And so now I'm back up here at the top. Um, so another thing you can do is right now I'm, I'll do a print working directory. You can see I'm in root, etc. If I want to go back to home, I could just type cd and hit enter and automate, automatically takes me back to home. Right? Also another thing I could do, I'll do change directory again, this time I'll go to root and then to, into var, right? Now I'm in the var directory, which is underneath root. If I want to go back to home, I could also do cd space and then type the tilde and hit enter and that'll also take me back to home. Watch, I'll hit print working directory. You can see I'm back at my home folder, right? Okay. All right, I'm in my home directory right now. Let's type ls and you'll see in my home directory, we've done the list command which shows you what's in your home directory. You can see I've got a um, desktop directory, a documents directory, a downloads directory. Let's go into the desktop directory. Now what I'll do is I'll type cd space desktop, right? And I hit enter and I get this message. There's no such file or directory. Well, that's because I typed cd the command and I typed desktop but I used a lowercase d when I spelled desktop and Linux is case sensitive. So if there's a capital letter, it has to be written or typed or keyed in with capital letter. You can't just, you know, in, in a Windows system, um, when you put in these types of uh, commands, Windows duck doesn't uh, differentiate between a uh, capital or a lowercase, but Linux systems do. So I could need to type CD, capital D, right? And I can type DES. Another thing that's pretty nice is I can hit tab for tab completion and it'll automatically complete the command for me because it sees, the system sees that um, there's only one file or directory in here that starts with DES and so if I hit tab it'll just automatically complete um, what I'm trying to do. I'll hit enter and now I'm in my desktop folder. I'll hit ls, right? Now we've talked about it before if I hit cd space dot dot that goes up one folder in the directory so if I do that now I am back in my um, home directory, right? If I, let's see here, do cd space one dot, that means current directory. So I'll do that, and then I'll type pwd, and you'll see I'm still in my Dan home folder, right? My user folder, right? Nothing changed, as opposed to cd space dot dot, which takes me up one folder, right? And now I'm in home. Okay, I'm going to type cd, and if I wanted to put in an absolute path to get to my, let's say, um, desktop, right? An absolute path would be root folder, home, forward slash, dan, forward slash, capital D, desktop. Now that is an absolute path to my desktop folder. Now why? Because it starts with root and it has all of the directories afterwards or underneath root to get to where I want to go. And that's called an absolute path. If I want to use a relative path, I see that I'm already in home, right? I'm already in home. All I do is type change directory dan forward slash desktop. And that's a relative path. Why is it relative? Well, it's relative to where I am in the file system. And right now, in the directory structure, I'm already in home. So I don't need to tell it go to root home 
Dan desktop. All I have to do is tell it go to Dan and then desktop. So that's the difference between a relative path and an absolute path. They both have the same function. They're going to take me to my desktop folder. It's just how you decide to do it and how you're going to type it in. It's a lot quicker to use a relative path versus an absolute path. Okay, let's talk some more about the list command. Okay, I'm in my home directory. I'm going to type uh, change directory and then um, there. I'm going to type change directory and tilde and I make sure I'm in my home directory. Also, I can do a pwd see that I'm in my home directory and I'll type the ls command. Now the ls command lists all the files and directories in my um, folder, my current folder that I'm in, which is my home folder right now named Dan. But there's another ls command that we can use and that is ls space and we can pass it an argument which would be dash l, uh, dash lowercase l and hit enter and that's the list long command. And the list long command shows us some more um, output. It shows us first of all whether it is a um, directory, right, a folder or a file by the first initial here. If it's D it's a directory. If it's a dash it's a file. Then it shows us the file permissions and the fire file permissions are in um, groups. So there is owner and then you can see here the owner has read, write, execute and then the group has read and execute and then the public has read and execute and you can see that this folder the um, owner has read write access the group has read access and the public has um, or general users have uh, just read only access right so these are the file permissions or the permissions on the folder you can see that um, that let's see here the owner is um, Dan the group is I'm in the Dan group right this is the folder or file size this is the last modified date and this is a timestamp right also what we can do is we can pass multiple arguments so I can do an LS space dash L but I could also do an A for all and if I do that I list long right list long format and I can see all of the um, files in the directory including the hidden files now the hidden files start with a dot in front of them so in the Linux file system if you have a hidden file it gets a um, dot a period in front of the file name so you can see that there's a lot of hidden folders right here that we didn't know there are there but now you can see them also um, can see and I'm wondering if I missed something here let's do it again ls dash l a right and we get the same output here now did I miss any output because it's going off screen right so I'm wondering did I did I miss anything so what I'll do is I'll type clear right and I'll do ls list space dash l a and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pipe it with the pipe symbol which is the symbol if you hold down your shift key it's right above the backslash right which is above the enter key and then I'm going to do a space and I'll type the more command so I'm going to list I'm going to put in these arguments and then I'm going to pipe it to the more command which will help me um, read only one screen at a time of information so I'll hit enter and you can see that it has listed in fact all the files the first file was the um, dot file which means current directory right um, and you'll see down here at the bottom it says more now with the more command what that means is I can use the the space bar and see the next screen of output And if I do that the next screen of output you see I just was missing one line here right so that's it now there's a um, I'm going to type the clear command there is an alias or a shortcut for the ls dash l command and that is ll or list long if you hit list long you can see that it actually gives you the um, list long and it gives you all the files including the hidden files so that's kind of nice so instead of having to type ls space dash la all you have to do is type ll and that's an example of an alias right um, 